This week on Awesome Cast, we talk about technology, including the Microsoft announcements. That's an expensive educational laptop. Uh, that and so much more of the crazy crowds to chill at. And hey, Missy's here too. Awesome Cast. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. Time to get geeky. Talk tech. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a wonderful crew of people. We like to get, talk with people in Pittsburgh using technology, about technology. Myself, a podcaster and video producer here in the area on the wonderful SorgatronMedia.com podcast network. And I got to move my pop screen, it sounds like. Uh, also with us on the couch, he's done munching. He is John Chichilla, the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. Da Munch. Da Munch in Da, da Munch Incorporated. Da Munch Incorporated. That's it. There you go. Uh, thank you. He is John oh, somebody's got their video going. That's me. Sorry. Oh no. Uh, how you doing this week, sir? Pretty good. How are you? All right. And with us because it's a Microsoft show this week. At least we'll keep it to the second half, I think, for the most part here. Uh, Crazy Kraus, Ron Kraus, joins us as well. The Microsoft, I was called out for calling you the Microsoft nut in the uh, description for the live feed tonight. That's okay. I don't mind being called the Microsoft nut. <laughs> I am kind of the Microsoft nut, although I am starting to lean a little more towards Android, but we won't go there tonight. No, no, absolutely not. And of course, on the ones and twos, and she's got the beaten stick over there to keep me in line. It is Missy Sorg, uh, producer extraordinaire at Rebellious Flaw on the Twitter. Hi. It's so nice not to be forgotten. It's, okay, it's so nice not to be forgotten. I forgot to turn your audio up, though. See, again, I was forgotten. <laughs> You're only half forgotten. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hanging out here in the studio. Uh, you can check us out. We're live.awesomecast.net or on the Facebook Live or just uh, over on e that little linky link over at awesomecast.com every Tuesday night around 7 p.m. Eastern, which is a lie next week because we will not be here because I will be on my way to Michigan. Uh, so look for a, an alternate time this week. This is going to happen a couple times because of my travel schedule for work. Um, but, uh, but keep an eye out for that or any updates or anything else or any live awesome chat interviews we might be doing in the near future as well. You can drop us a line, a news or anything like that at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on the Twitter, awesomecast Facebook group over on the Facebook, uh, where we have a lot of stories kind of crop up throughout the week here, uh, that, you know, that we get to talk about, that you guys get to contribute, and we really do appreciate that. Uh, you can also subscribe and rate us, you know, uh, leave a comment. It's really helpful on that little algorithm thing on the iTunes to help get the word out there. You know, even if you just star us, just go on iTunes. If you, maybe even iTunes, everybody's got iTunes installed for the most part, right? Even Kraus has iTunes installed, right? I think he's got a little bit of delay. He's got a lot of delay. Yeah, I got a little bit of delay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got? You're choppy tonight, so I'm I'm trying to keep up. All right, no problem. We'll uh, uh, allow for that here as as we go. Um, so. Uh, you can please subscribe to us and rate us over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and Facebook pages. And thanks to our f streaming partners, uh, RiversEdgePGH.com. We're uh, currently, and I think it's going to change soon, uh, Thursdays at 8 a.m. after Funny Money over there. Uh, other than that, great local music, and as well as our friends at the 405 Media. As I was uh, giving them a shout out as I was driving the 405 when I was out in Cali just yesterday, actually. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, our partners helping us to spread the awesome cast to some new audiences 
um, all over the country and beyond. And also, thank you so much to the people that support us over at patreon.com slash awesomecast, including Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level. He gets me talking about how I broke my computer, and uh, as well as the fan of the show level at the dollar at Mike Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter for him. You can, uh, again, follow the show, uh, contribute there if you would like to to help us grow the show at patreon.com slash awesomecast um or just please share the show we really do appreciate just any way that you can help us spread the word and grow and uh also a big uh kind of a shout out here that we're going to be doing something we've been talking about doing a uh, video game show here for a couple of months now i think and we are actually going to do a beta test of a show here this thursday um who do we have in the lineup i am not I, I'm going to be here, but I'm not uh, directly going to be involved in this show. Uh, more of an engineer capacity. We're going to let the gaming experts. I unfortunately don't have as much time as I would like to play video games and keep up with everything. Um, let alone own a, a Nintendo Switch, I guess. But uh, uh, Missy, uh, fill us in real quick. What what are we? Uh, what, what's going on Thursday night? What do we have in the works? Well, for those of you out there who who used to watch our insert coin boss battle. Uh, series that where we talk video game stuff you're gonna see some familiar faces kicking back in uh for the inaugural episode we figured we'd bring chachi back to the show and uh he's also gonna be joined by riz who's been doing riz plays games and doing some fun stuff over on twitch with regard to that which speaking of uh, we're also going to be checking out twitch streaming for that show versus our facebook live streaming so we're going to try to integrate some of that kind of cross-platform work and if you've been watching the Mayhem show, you've seen Chad, the Shad. Uh, so we're, we're talking with him about coming on for the show as well. Uh, everybody brings a different flavor of video games to, to the conversation. And since it's May 4th, we're, we're going to be talking some Star Wars, I think. Awesome. Looking forward to see what the guys have in store there and uh, yeah, say developing something new around here. Again, we were talking about the awesome cast growing and that's one of the points of it. And also keep an eye out as soon as I get a computer that can do green screen king. Uh, we're going to get some awesome tips that you saw some pictures from a couple weeks ago <laughs> uh, done as well. It's hard to do chroma key on a 2011 Mac mini. <laughs> so we're just going to put that aside until we get some new hardware here uh, in the coming weeks, hopefully. Uh, so, and again, just tune in for gold. We'll probably talk a little bit more about that off air, uh, for, for you guys on the gold level. Uh, cause it's really interesting. The things that a Mac does when things are going wrong are fascinating. Just fascinating. I'm interested to hear what, what, how it gets, how it gets resolved or if it can be. Resolved. I don't, I, well, I, I, either way, like I said, I think it's getting replaced, but, um, I will go into an Apple store and see if there's anything to fix it. Mm -hmm. But I, like, I'm just out of pure curiosity. Be like, listen, what is wrong with this thing? I can't find anything. I'm actually, but again, that's for gold. Let's get into our awesome things, Louis, because this show is about positivity and technology. Not complaining about our iPhones for the most part. Not not complaining about what the heck Uber has done this week. Um, this is about awesome things in video game. No, that's the other show. In, <laughs> in technology, <laughs> in in uh, internet, in social media, in geekdom. So uh, uh, let's kick it off with Mr. Krause so we can let yes, his sir. feed catch up and uh, he can tell us what his awesome thing is. So my awesome thing is a new set of Bluetooth headphones. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, I showed you the MPAL Bluetooth headphones and um, I said, you know, they were like, I think they were $21 at the time. Um, well, I wore them pretty much every day for a year and a half. And so they finally stopped working. I went out to Amazon and, uh, found that there was a new version of the same headphones and they are actually only 1995. I don't know if you can see them there. Yep, we you're got probably them. showing them. Yep. You're okay. You're probably showing them on the screen and they even come with a nice case and extra Ooh. tips and a charge cable and everything. And I have to tell you, I've been using them for about a week and a half now, and they're just as good, if not better, than the previous version. And at at twenty at nineteen ninety nine, it sounds you know like one of those old. By now, it's only nineteen ninety nine, you know, but they actually do work very well. I'm not. I was never really familiar with the MPAL brand name. 
And so if you're a brand name shopper, you might be hesitate, but I can tell you for 20 bucks, they're definitely worth the money. Uh, yeah. I would caution hearing something like M pow, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> just, uh, yeah. It sounds like something I want to pick up at five below. I, I, exactly. I saw but they do work great. I, yeah. Go ahead, John. Sorry. I, I, I saw on the, the side of them when you were holding them up, they have like the curl piece that goes up into your ear. Did that come with them? Cause they weren't in the picture. Yeah, it does come with them. Um, it's an, it's actually one of the accessories. There's three different sizes. These happen to be the mediums here. I'll hold it up to the screen so you can see it. Um, yeah, I don't know here. Yep. You can see the curl. Yep. But that's the medium size one. And you don't have to use that. Actually, my old set didn't come with that kind, um, kind of connection. And I was wanted to try it out. And it actually holds them into your ear much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the old way after having a pair of beats that have those on them and after having a pair of i think they were a set that came with what did they come with probably a samsung galaxy device like i never don't want to have that curly piece that kind of fits up into your ear only because like i find when i'm traveling on the train all the background noise that I pick up, that holding it more in my ear and everything snug and soundproof, I, I, I don't hear almost anything around me, which can be dangerous too. But um, it, it makes for a much better but great for the experience. great for the train, yeah. Especially yeah. like I, the, you've probably mm -hmm. been on a New York subway and realize how mm -hmm. loud that is, or on a plane. You know, I was uh, I, I kept having the crank up uh, uh, coming back last night because uh, it was just I, so loud. You know, the, between the takeoff and everything like that, and you're just like trying to zone it out, mm -hmm. as I try to do, um, to 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 roll through it. Um, yeah, no, I think that that that's def definitely really cool. So, I right. can attest they work great on the Port Authority. <laughs> I use them on the bus every day. Hey, we got. I think we got some you know low decibel public transportation as far as cities go. Uh, with with yeah, our stuff true. here, so I, I think we're very fortunate in that. I mean, our our light rail systems. Uh, very quiet, I think, in, in the long run. Uh, but, uh, yeah, certainly. So check it out. The MPAL Bluetooth headphones, a wireless earbuds. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes. And it's only nineteen ninety nine currently on Amazon. So sometimes we're, I feel like we're an Amazon, like, buyer's guide a little bit. But that's eh, all right. All right. Two days with the deck stock. Tell me about it, Shilla. So I'm, you know what? I feel like I'm living in the future. So, so I have the deck stock. Wait, it looks like it from this <laughs> angle. So, <laughs> so, so it's probably about the size of like two, one and a half hockey pucks stacked on each other. Mm -hmm. And it closes up. Um, well, explain. Let's roll back. Mm -hmm. What okay. is the deck stock? So, so the deck stock allows you to take a Samsung Galaxy S8 device and you can dock it into this this nice, lovely dock. Mm -hmm. And when you plug it in here, you actually plug an HDMI cord. Um, it has two USB ports, an Ethernet jack for those those perfect Hangout experiences, and a power port. Um, it turns the device into a desktop experience, and it will actually allow you to... Um, to use it like a desktop. All your apps come over windowed, um, any of the apps that use um, what's called like the new floating where you can kind of float them around your screen mm -hmm. actually size perfectly. Um, mail applications, instead of just being kind of your your top down list of mail, now have your mail in a preview pane, much like your, your Gmail experience. Well, like like some mail client experiences, um, it just it just kind of really changes the way you would use a, a phone app um it it almost reminds me of what you would want like as an android app running on a on a chromebook mm -hmm. um they put a nice menu that's very familiar in the lower left hand corner um <clears throat> and all of your notification panel is off to the right almost like where your time would be on a, on a windows machine mm -hmm. um, and everything comes perfectly um through as an app i mean some of the apps that aren't necessarily ready, like I was playing around with Facebook just to see what it would be like, um, they don't support that new float interface. And the the cool thing is, is up in the up in the menu or up in the title bar for the app, it actually has a button that shows rotate, and it lets you rotate the app as if you would rotate your phone. 
Um, obviously, there's some apps that you can only get to certain menus. That experience on the go. I would say within about four seconds of plugging the device into the dock, um, you're up and running. And <clears throat> uh, you do have to kind of authenticate just like you would to your, your Android device, whether it's a um, pattern unlock or you can use the facial recognition on the device. You can use the fingerprint sensor, however you want to authenticate. You can authenticate. Keyboard and mouse come over perfectly. Um, key commands that you would be familiar with, like Alt-Tab or Command-Tab on Mac, switch between applications. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like having a desktop at your fingertips. And does it feel uh, powerful enough? Yes, but now keep in mind you're running a bunch of Android apps on an Android device. Right, so, and you're just kind of blowing them up a little bit, and I can't imagine you're using much that's very intensive. Like, are you using a lot of like you're not doing video or games or anything on? I, I haven't I haven't tried any games. I'm interested in trying some games now. Keep in mind that the device is meant for Gear VR. Mm -hmm. oh. um, there is in the in the back of the device um, there is a fan. That will kick on if now we you, I can't find a case and I'm guessing it's by design. You can actually leave the case on when it's in the dock. You actually have to take your your case off, much like with Gear VR. Okay. Um, and this will actually circulate air, kind of across the back of the device and around so the device. So pain in the ass if you're somebody that has like one of the fully snap in yeah. like uh, uh what what's the one I got the I just remember it's called a nude. Uh, the, the, whatever, the, hold on, does it say on my case? Oh, life proof. Life yeah, proof. Like a life proof. Like I'm not taking this off and on. Yeah. Cause that's going <clears> to <throat> kill the seal on it. Right. Right. Uh, I mean, this has been locked the, in here for a while. I, well I use kind of like one of those jelly covers that you can yeah. just kind of. Yeah. But, but more business people or that's what they're going to have. Yeah. And the, the other interesting thing we're interested in trying with work is, um, we have kind of like virtual machines where you can remote into a, a full fledged PC. Mm -hmm. So I could remote in and run other full fledged desktop applications. Now, Samsung did work directly with Microsoft and I was playing around with that today. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they all look much like the desktop version. Um, they're just obviously running on Android. They did, all, they did, they worked with Samsung directly to make sure their, their apps scale appropriately. Um, the, the mail app and some of the proprietary stuff I used for work worked great. Um, the scroll wheel on my mouse worked. Like things that you would think, oh, I wonder if they overlooked this. They obviously spent a lot of time and, and, and put some detail into it, um, which I think is great. And like I said, they, they, <clears throat> they also took into account applications that may not be 100% ready like Facebook um, and gave you some additional toolbar type stuff where you can rotate the device or, or move the apps around or whatnot. Um, Twitter looked great on it. Um, I, I've been pretty impressed. I'm, I'm interested in actually trying the next time I'm at home and on the show is coming in on Hangout because it's going to pull the full front facing camera off the device, right? Mm -hmm. And almost seeing what it looks like as a second, a, a second video feed. Interesting. Um, which will be pretty cool. That that'd be great. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Because <laughs> as I'm looking at you know again doing this like and maybe being a little more mobile mm -hmm. as we're having Tuesday nights, I'm actually determined wrestling mayhem show. We're still going to try to do on wherever I'm at. I may have to do it on LTE or something, but we're going to still do it on at least Google Hangout, mm -hmm. right? So you know, like I'd love to see like something convert like that. So awesome. All right, producer Missy. This looks very interesting and throwbacky, and I might have to dig some uh, a small box of things out of the back of my closet. Yeah, uh, Chilla took us into the future. I am taking us into the past. This I can't remember who shared it on Facebook, but I saw this and I was like, "Is this a legit thing?" And I did some deep diving, and yes, this is a legit thing. Uh, it is the elbow, and it is the device that could bring back cassette tapes. So pretty much it's just this little, uh, this little gadget that doesn't even fit. It's not even the size of the cassette. It's, it's a small little, like it's the size of a thumb drive and it fits over the wheel that would play and it reads the tape and it plays back like a Walkman for your, your cassette tapes. So yeah, that's. I'm completely 
psyched about this as an option because it's doing all all it needs to do the, the only thing i would i would say about this is you kind of expose well and that's the actually tape a little that's, bit, that's one of the right? that's one of the selling features is that it you can accessorize using your cassette tapes mm. so it, to your point though because the other parts of the magnetic tape are going to be exposed while it plays yes which would worry me yeah, and you have like kind of moving parts and everything like that. Like it would worry me, but those are pretty. I mean, it's not like a CD that's exposed or, or or a floppy disk that's exposed or something. Is but still, like that's that's pretty cool. You know, like you're, it's not gonna be great if you spill your soda on your, you know, down your lap and and where this is, or on your jean jacket by looking at this. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, this it's image completely here. The, the image is completely throw back. So this is for real, and, and does, is there a price on this or anything? I don't see one in the article. No, uh, the article didn't. Um, like it, it looked to me that it was in development because when I went to the website that, that I found for them, they had done a survey of the crowd to see if this would be something that they would be interested in. So it looks like they're starting to develop. Yeah, so they're entering the prototype stage where they're figuring yeah, out the so physical and financial realities. Still working on it, but it's that's that's a real thing. That that's real cool. Yeah, can you get cassette tape players anymore? Players? Like, like, new? like I'm sure you can. You like can. New or you? Uh, yeah, you can get record players. I, I can't see why well, you records, wouldn't. Vi records vinyl, came back. Yeah, they're, vinyl they're came making, back. They're producing vinyl again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's that's kind of a niche thing that they're doing. Um, cassette tapes. I don't think you can. Like, I feel like for those people that have, like, a huge cassette tape collection laying around. but Is my mom anything, still in the chat? I want to see what she thinks of this. If, if they're laying around, I almost feel like you could hook this up to, like, a, a little RCA cable and input it into your, your computer and start ripping off all of your cassette tapes that you can't get. Like, there's certain cassette tapes that I have that there's no way I would ever be able to digitally download that music. Mm-hmm. Like this would be the perfect way to then get to throw it into Audacity and 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 rip Just it a off nice for permanent keeping. Yeah, I mean, mm. well, you could, but you could have always, um, you know, take a Walkman and yeah, RCA and, it. But in. the problem is, is I think I got rid of all my Walkmans, but I didn't get rid of all my cassette tapes. Mm. <laughs> well, and that's when I posted it. Uh, Sorg's sister actually said that she was going to go dig out her box of cassette tapes. And there have been a couple of other people that have, you know, commented on it here and there. And that's exactly what they said. It's like, I still have cassette tapes sitting in like a box in the back of my closet somewhere. Mm -hmm. so everybody has them still. You got you got rid of your boom box, but you kept your tapes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think we So do we have to blame Guardians of the Galaxy for this? <laughs> for the whole <laughs> cassette tape craze? Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand. You know I lived through that era. I don't want to go back. <laughs> You don't like the fast forward and you don't like turning over to tape the tape to go to side B? <coughs> no, not at all. And getting a pencil out because it's running out the <laughs> top of the, t the tape and you have to roll it back in. No, I, I'll take my MP3s. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> there's okay. that. Sorg, hmm. how do we get our podcast onto cassette tapes? Oh, 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 oh. A lot of time. Listen, I used to do, I used to work on a product that we put on VHS. Oh, so, we did, yes. and it was stacks of VCRs, 10 stacks at a time. We had two or three stacks of them and we were, we were bumping out like hundreds. Now, when you found a problem with the video, you had to go back and fix. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you needed to proof that one. Very, it was very so great. Thoroughly. We were doing VHS as well into 2008. Yes. I believe. How now, about sitting listening to the radio with the tape on pause, waiting for the song you were wanting to record <laughs> to let go of the pause button at the right moment so the DJ's not being recorded and only the song is. Oh, yes, I lived through that era. No, thank you. <laughs> at one point in, I believe, the third grade, I decided to put on something of a puppet show with my Alf, uh, my, my stuffed Alf. Uh, and people remember Alf. Uh, and I had taken, I had sat there in the, sh the show was playing on a Monday night. We did not record the show on, on, on tape or anything. Uh, we might've had a VCR by then and sitting and just catching him saying phrases and to use later. <laughs> so wow. I just had a tape of everything Alf would say in an episode <laughs> and just had the Alf 
react to it. I think I presented this in front of this class or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's, wow. Yeah, my I did weird stuff back then. My favorite thing was we had like the the personal cassette player, and mine had broken, and my cousin had a Teddy Ruxpin. Oh. So we would play music in the Teddy Ruxpin. Did you ever put your dad's Black Sabbath in the uh, Teddy Teddy Ruxpin? No, no, no. I didn't because that would have been epic. I, I, I didn't go near dad's <laughs> dad's tapes. You don't tell dad's you don't touch dad's tapes. Dad's well, especially since Sabbath. like the majority of my dad's music at the time was actually on uh, probably vinyl, right? Ah, uh, no, eight track, eight track. Oh, the eight tracks. Yes. Yeah, I grew up on the eight tracks. All right, let's move on to new technology. <laughs> so I had fun. So there's a lot of stuff we I've been talking about over the last several weeks, months, whatever, right? And uh, my uh, my awesome thing is really just kind of getting out there on a on a job and being able to use it in a pretty massive scale. Um, so first of all, if you've been follow if you followed my Twitter slash Facebook probably on fr- uh, Sunday, so that was Sunday. Uh, I was out with uh, out on the job. We're doing another season with um, um, Baja SAE, and I'm actually going to be doing Formula here next week. That's why we had to change our schedule. Um, and I was like, wait, I got this GoPro. Maybe I can get some cool shots. I can put it over by the track when the cars aren't coming through and, um, and you know, get some cool, like, really close shots that'd be really dangerous to get otherwise and everything like that. So I, I, I tried it a couple times and I got some, well, I didn't know what I was getting yet um, until I finally um, tried it on one track and I'm just sitting there and waiting for the car to go by. And if you guys are on video, uh, you know, I'm going to pull up the thing from Twitter. You, you see it pull up. And kablow! Completely ran over my GoPro. The GoPro still works. It actually, this shot at the end was my shot. Actually, it got mud covered because they were watering the track, so it kept getting a hose on it every few minutes. <laughs> but I have about an hour and a half of that before the battery died. Um, so it so appears to be just fine. And um, there you go. And it's, a, it's, it's the cheapest GoPro, too, which I'm really glad because I kind of wouldn't want to throw an expensive one where I was putting it. Um, I got other other things like this. So so the guy, <laughs> I might cause somebody making an illegal motion, too, because uh, he was really kind of pushing the guy off of the track for the most part. And he actually went off the track. because this, this is like kind of an elevated dirt thing and went off into the grass and actually ran over one of the volunteers bags and water uh as far off as it went like he went like really horribly off the track for this thing uh so um but yeah i, I so I, I just had a little joby pod you can see it at the end uh in the corner and, and it was just kind of up in a bush that i didn't feel comfortable going near during the active race and this is the endurance race where there's about something like 80 85 cars that are doing about a mile mile and a half of track um, you know, dirt, obstacles, all kinds of things, Baja cars, kind of go-kart size Baja cars, um, just constantly going for about four hours straight. So, and this has been the first maybe half hour to an hour of the, of the race. So I was like, Oof. in the way it caught it, I, in my mind, not seeing it immediately. Um, I thought that the GoPro and the Joby Gorilla Pod may be captured underneath the, the frame of the car. And could have been anywhere on the track at that point, because the way I saw it catch. Um, so, it, but it was just there. So, so tip: if you're going to do something like this, where you think you might lose a GoPro, getting hit by a Baja car, or whatever the case, get a hot pink um, case or Gorilla Pod so you can find it. <laughs> is my first thing. So, and don't put something where you're not afraid. If you're it, be okay with it getting really nailed by something like this. Like it could have been absolutely obliterated by this thing, but those things are tough. Yeah, it had case on it and everything. I didn't do the full um, water protection case, so mm-hmm. it had an exposed USB port, but it seems it seems to work fine. And I'll I'll try using it next week. So um, other things that I got to use playing with some of the toys, um, and, and also I want to kind of share something that that uh, one of the one of the sponsors uh, Volvo was doing was kind of fun. And a little tip for you guys if you're uh, playing loud music in the desert. Um, so I was playing with a lot of Instagram stories and everything too along the way. And uh, you may remember the grip gear, the the track for the slow motion shots. I still mm-hmm. have to get the shots together and everything. 
Uh, so it'll be a little bit, but it, it was it was uh, uh, kind of cool to play with. I'll have a shot here in a second. Uh, so I was kind of attaching it to a couple of things. I have a nice kind of field shot. There's a little bit of my setup with uh, the dust covering, and there's uh, there, there's the track kind of in action. Uh, set it up in the uh, in the tech tent where a lot of cars are coming in, getting checked out, doing slow mo, having it just kind of raise and lower, and I just had to do it a bunch of times. Now here's the Volvo setup. So they made these custom cars, um, and check out the speakers on the back of the truck. And is that also a TV on the back of the truck? Yeah, it's a TV too. It was way too bright for them to use it. Um, this Mac, this Mac uh, 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 kind of trailer that they made. This is a six wheel <laughs> thing. It's got a it's got a backup camera um, <laughs> and everything in it. Uh, this is just something they made in their spare time as part of their sponsorship for SIE, which was really really cool. I, I, we're probably going to do a piece on this in the near future. So. There's a little preview there. There's a little uh, Mac dog on the front of it. So it's like a, it, it's a mix between Mac Volvo, which I think they're the same company. Polaris donated some parts. Briggs and Stratton actually. So these have the same engines that they have for the student cars as well. Um, so and should be in a moment. There's the Volvo. There's the stereo in the side of it. And check out those speakers. I got some cool shots of the speakers vibrating that, that I'm going to try to use later. Um, so they 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 put this in the middle of the field during during the uh, endurance race and they found out at the end um apparently whether they were just kind of like raising them or attracting them they kept finding rattlesnakes around <laughs> the stereo and this thing could go like you you heard it like all through the canyon no matter all through the canyon no matter where you're at you you heard the music right and they were playing Pandora because I heard the commercial every once in a while. Uh, somebody didn't, doesn't pay for their Pandora. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so if you have a giant system and you're in the middle of the desert, you may attract or at least stir up rattlesnakes. So beware. Glad I didn't see any. Although I saw some really nasty giant spiders. So, yeah. Uh, so that was my educational thing from the weekend out there. Uh, it's really, very really cool. Like up in the mountains, kind of the desert mountains uh, above about an hour and a half north of um, of uh, uh, Los Angeles, same place we went about the same time last year. We went like I think late May last year. So uh, and we got four more of these trips to Baja to to Formula coming up here uh, that I'm hoping we can play with some tech out in the field and uh, kind of show you what we're what we're doing with that. That is all the awesome things of the week. So hey, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on? Sorry, I want to circle back. We we have a nice comment over here. Um, Scott has a spoiler alert for you with regard to Mac. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me money? What? Yes, he says they're, they're going to say that money will fix your Mac problems. Yeah, yeah. I was already looking at because I think it's a, a fan, maybe one of the culprits, and I'm seeing how much that's going to be. So, but no, I'm hoping I can, I'm going to press on for information. They're really cool down there at South Hills. They've done some really cool stuff that I'm not sure they were allowed to do before. We talked about on the show in the past. So so maybe I'll uh, look out there and then see what's going on. Oh. Sorg, I know you said this was supposed to be a positive episode, but since it is a Microsoft episode, maybe a little less fruit in your life would be better for you. I'm just saying. A little less fruit in my life. Um, considering the times that Microsoft's uh, updates have shut down this very show, I'm going to say I'm good with my fruit and I have a healthy appetite for it. Um, Just because you pick Tuesdays the same day as Almighty Patch Day, that's not Microsoft's <laughs> fault. It is when they make me update in the middle of the show and I can't turn Tuesday it off. For 10 years 15 years that's a good point Come though. On I, i'm surprised that they don't yeah but the difference is enterprise can delay the update yeah my my measly little podcast can. is not going to drop a dime for enterprise mode you know what i mean it's just uh, I'm hey surprised. patreon help us afford patreon or enterprise mode for windows 10 so we stop getting interrupted in the middle of our podcast i'm surprised they don't actually do like enterprise on tuesday and home on saturday Microsoft, if you're listening, maybe you should think. And we know you are. Strategy. Hello, Pittsburgh, uh, Microsoft Office. We know. I think people from Google definitely listen. Oh, really? Uh, I think I've heard somebody from Google does the show. Yeah. Hmm. Like I don't know if they actively listen, but like they know of us or whatever. So, uh, who knows? So, so I was having a conversation with someone and asked them, "Yeah, I do a podcast," <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, I've heard of it." <laughs> 
So Sorg, of course, thinks that people listen to our podcast now. <laughs> One, yeah, that's kind of how the the conversation went. How did you know? And two, yes, absolutely, they listen to this show. Come on. Um, anyways, well, we uh, our, our show is supported and fueled. Well, first by caffeine, uh, but mostly by our sponsor. That was we had to demunch the beginning of the show because uh, Chilla was still munchifying on some slice on Broadway, right, Chilla? Yes, definitely. My favorite. Yes, absolutely. And uh, and even in our meetings, uh, uh, we had whatever on Mayhem show. I think our we had a, a meetup that was happening while I was away. Everybody goes to Slice on Broadway. Uh, so thank you to our friends that have been supporting the show. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza. Uh, Slice on Broadway here in on the Broadway Avenue in Beachview as well as Main Street in Carnegie, PA. And in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, it's baseball season. And that means it's pizza season two. Go check it out. Uh, thanks to our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. Let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. Looking for my button to make this thing go away. There we go. Um, hi. Okay, let's talk about some more tech things. Okay, we do have a couple things, but I really want to make sure we do get into uh, the big news of the day. And, and if we have time, I'll try to get into some of these others. Microsoft did a thing. Microsoft did do a thing. So we got our two M Money guys on here. So let us know why, what, what's going to make me defruit my life, Kraus? Well, I don't know if today's annou- announcement will make you defruit your life, but because um, it was a lot more focused on education. Um, but it was it was a it was an interesting talk. Um, I'd like to see, I like where they were going. I think a lot of the tools will compete with, um, the fruit of the world and the Googles of the world. Um, it'll probably make some people's uh, decisions a little more, a little tougher. But as John and I were talking at work today, um, the, the way the conversations happened, we might both have a little bit of a problem with, um, cause you know, th- they spent pretty much what was it john about an hour and a half they spent most of the conversation talking about education and then the last thing they did was talk about a starting price new surface uh tablet or um laptop for 999 dollars so it was kind of a mixed message yeah i I totally agree that that, that, to to ron's point yeah but for for there was probably about a half an hour education intro and then they they talked about their their partners like your Dells and your um, Fujitsu's and your Acer, Asus, all those companies. And their their starting price came in, I think with two eighty nine was gonna be like the the starting price for all those their their partner devices. And then they closed out the show with new hardware, which is a which is a Microsoft Surface laptop. So it's not a detachable keyboard. Um, it's more of the typical clamshell form factor we're all used to. It doesn't doesn't fold back on itself. Doesn't do anything crazy. Um, but I was surprised to see the starting price of of nine ninety nine. Um, so I'm interested to see what some of the other companies are doing to get that price point so much lower. I'm guessing that all of the partner devices will be touchscreen i'm guessing that's going to kind of be a minimum spec for them because all the education stuff they did um the other thing i was interested to see kraus and i just noticed it on the surface laptop um it has one usb 3 port one sd card slot and one mini display port and a headset jack and that's it now they did definitely play up the this works with all of our other docks. So if you already have a dock at home or you want to put a dock at the office and dock in and use additional ports, the dock works with it. And I'm guessing because it's USB three, but and it's not USB C. Um, but I, I was surprised to see the lack of ports. You're you're plugging one thing into that. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> It feels very apple doesn't it? Yeah, and a proprietary charging connector. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so I think we may. Oh, lost, we lost Kraus. We lost Kraus. I, right, I, I, I figured there was a Kraus response coming, but the internet it disagreed. <clears throat> the 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 um. 
going through they they did a lot of cool not even gimmicky things where um they really took the new 3d paint in windows and mm. showed you hey look you can create using these kind of pre-formatted pre-built um clips you could take the earth with the moon on a rotational orbit and put it with the sun and take kind of in 3d paint and model this out and then take it right into powerpoint and automatically animate it to kind of tell a story about solar eclipse and that kind of thing and it was a pretty cool they did it live on stage now this is all coming in the fall update for for windows and office mm -hmm. but they did it on stage and they did it in they did the whole thing in like a minute so it was pretty cool to be able to then think about what students could do with this right mm -hmm. is you could take these bits and pieces put it together tell a story um the other thing they did with augmented reality that i thought was really cool is they took um the mars curiosity rover and they turned a they had a surface tablet there um and pointed it to the, the person on the stage and then plopped the Curiosity rover next to her. So this sounds like, because didn't they do something with the Curiosity rover, Mars, like, like for HoloLens? The, for HoloLens, kind of yes. Yeah, for HoloLens, they yeah. had some stuff. Yeah, so, so the interesting thing was, to put, put it in perspective, and I never realized that the Curiosity rover is seven feet tall. Well, the camera can figure out what's their augmented reality system can figure out what's a wall, what's this height, what's that height, and then properly sized it next to the person on stage. And now augmented reality becomes real. It becomes real and it becomes, to me, it becomes accessible to the masses because the one thing they said is if you have a V, this works, this was designed to work with a six, with a VGA camera. And for those of you who know, VGA is 640 by 480 right so not even 1080 not we're not talking 4k we're a not talking standard webcam from over 10 years ago yes yeah. and that's what it was that's what this was all designed to work around and the other thing they said was now they the windows s and i'm guessing s is for student is a slim and trim windows os mm -hmm. um i was surprised also that that slim and trim os is the default OS at that 999 level. So if really? you want to go pro, it's a paid up. So 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 I'm reading here because it, it looks like it's the spiritual successor to the Windows RT, where it's uh, uh from from it looks like their line from the Microsoft site in these images here says uh, uh streamlined for security performance works exclusively with apps from the Windows Store. Now that's different from when we had the Windows RT, which was I believe Windows 8. And it would only run, except for special editions of, say, Office and and Microsoft desktop apps. Everything had to be in that 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 Windows Store thing. Yes. But that is definitely more realistic because there is more in the store. You could get away with stuff from just the Windows Store at this point. And they're that for that reason, they're moving the Edge browser into the store. They're moving the Office applications into the store. Right. Um. I don't. I don't know how Creative Cloud currently i think creative cloud is its own thing so they're gonna to have to get in the store which yeah. what does that do because they're not in the apple store for very specific reasons you know yeah. but i mean but all they need is like they kind of need the creative cloud thing in the store but that man that because i don't know how that sandboxing works that i don't because you basically download an app that downloads the rest of the apps like, like the Creative Cloud is its own app store mm -hmm. of sorts. Now, so. there are other Adobe products in the store. Yeah. Um, and there is like a Photoshop Lite and whatnot. But um, it'll be interesting to see where the... I feel like this is a way to get the Windows back in the schools mm -hmm. and get major app developers into the store. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great idea. It's, it's definitely going to gonna boost. And by getting in the store... That also means that you you could easily create your app because to get it into the store, I think it has to be universal Windows platform, which means, oh, by the way, it runs on Xbox and phone. The phone that we don't really make anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I think this could be the, the precursor to, hey, mm -hmm. let's revisit the phone. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So so we have some new services. We have a new edition uh, uh, for, uh, say, mostly for... Well, then, see, RT. This is not just an ARM processor one. Like this is. Oh, it's a core. They they are not even making a Core i three. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Now, Microsoft's not making a Core i3. It starts at Core i5, Core okay. i7. They're those the third party companies like your Dells and whatnot. They're definitely going to have Celerons and i3s and probably Core M's. And wow. So the Windows the Windows 10 S spans a price range of 189 to the 2199 price yes. range too. <clears throat> so, but and again, it is this is kind of like a a Chromebook type decision. It feels I know it's not completely equal but it's a hey does everything that i do exists in this ecosystem which is a, not just the windows ecosystem anymore it's the windows store ecosystem right mm-hmm. so um the, the interesting thing too though is unlike chrome you can take any windows 10 s from my understanding and up do an in-place upgrade to enterprise to pro to home and pro home and pro okay so and, and Kraus, correct me if you think if that's incorrect, but I believe we lost him again. <clears throat> okay, I even know from a from a Windows 10 pers- S perspective on the the for the at least the next 90 days of availability of the devices, they're actually going to give you a free upgrade to Pro. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I think schools with certain existing licenses have free use of Windows S, so they could actually. If they had like Windows Home devices that they wanted to to adhere to this, yeah. Um, one of the things that Kraus brought up that I didn't I didn't see a hundred percent when they were previewing it when we were talking at lunch was they have a way that you can take your school image um, and quickly um, configure machines. So you, pretty much when they're at the Windows, hey here configure Windows screen, you take. And you go into your school system and you create the image. And as soon as the the welcome to Windows first time setup screen comes up, you put, plug in that USB port or plug in that USB and it auto configures the device. And it's kind nice. of their way to just immediately refresh devices. That, that, that's awesome. Which, which is, is great for schools. Great. Awesome for schools. Because then you just go, boom, you're good to go. And uh, and you can roll. That, that's awesome. So. Uh, so Kraus seems to be out, but I'm really interested in some of his stories. So I'm wondering if there's any of those that he has listed there, Chilla, that, that you may have some information on as well. Uh, let me look. Cause, uh, between, I'm sorry, the links don't, are not clickable for me, unfortunately. So yeah, you have to hit enter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's hard to do on the iPad. Um, I'm guessing the Xbox rewards. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about the Xbox reward. <laughs> oh no, there's a select read. Okay, free I know, rewards. I know, I know speaking. Um, I know one of the things he uses a lot is um, with the rewards. Um, if you do so many Bing searches a day, if you read so many news articles on MSN. dot com, mm-hmm. you get all these points. I think Kraus is paid outright for all of his games with points. Wow. Um, yeah, there's stuff like uh, you know, go you know, in in stuff like Smite Trove. Like there is, you know, do so much stuff, um, get rewarded for free to play games, Fallout Shelter. Uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. You can even pa- you can even cash in your rewards points for Amazon cards. Wow. So if you're not. And, and what I think he on his way into work, reads a couple articles, mm-hmm. completes the daily challenges. And then also when you if you if you actually end up purchasing games, you get points for purchase. Um, and it's it's doesn't take you that long to accumulate enough points for for a nice $60 game or if you wait for some of their sales and speaking of Star Wars um, this month uh, there's on games with gold uh, there's two Star Wars games I think the first half is um, Force Unleashed was last month okay and then there's another was there a second Force Unleashed I uh, yeah there was so is it I on there too? I think the second one's the first half of this month and the second half of the month nice. is Star Wars Legos the Complete Saga. Oh man. <laughs> so great <laughs> stuff. Uh so, so we're talking some Star Wars and some video game stuff. Mhm. That reminds me we're going to be doing this on Thursday, which is May the 4th. Yes. Yes. And we're going to be talking about that with our new video game spinoff. Yeah, absolutely. Is absolutely. there so where's where's is there going to be a link to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll 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 share it on everywhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll do it the same way we do. There's with... an event. There's an event where you invited to the event. Did we invite you to the event? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's on Facebook, so we we have the time and everything there. What time is that going to be on Thursday? It's going to be the same time that, that we do this. It's going to be seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yes. It's earlier than I expected. Okay, <laughs> so uh, look for us there. 
Oh, the, the other one he has in here, Google Home's um, $15 off for Mother's Day down to just 114 bucks, which is, I mean, is a, is, it's a pretty cool device. And one of the things that I will say, Google Home came onto the, the field late, mm -hmm. but they're definitely gaining to me on Amazon by leaps and bounds, um, whether it be from allowing for multiple accounts to be on one Google Home, which is something that isn't the easiest thing to work with your Amazon Echo to do, um, their applications, they've, they've quickly partnered with some of the home automation. In fact, I saw today that uh, the iHome, the little control outlets that I've covered on the show, um, they now work with, with Google Home and Google Assistant. The other thing that I would actually like to try with the whole Google Home thing is being able to say and show that on the TV and mm -hmm. then it casts it up there, which, which would be pretty darn cool. Yeah, I love I love to play with the Google Home Chromecast uh, inter interactability. I would, that that seems like the perfect marriage between those things. So, uh, so other than that, it was mostly laptops and and a little bit of uh, AR today, right? Yeah, and they did show they did show a Windows. a full headset. It was a lower price point. It wasn't the Hololens. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely a, a cost conscious alternative for schools. So it was a low end Hololens no, or VR it was a partnered. It looked like it was more like VR. Okay. Um, but it was a partner device. I think it might have been made by Acer. Okay. Um, so we're getting to that point where you're going to have a lot of options, like mm -hmm. like the, your, you know, I, I guess you could look at Oculus and Vive um, as they were the the you know when you first get the Xbox One and it's five hundred dollars, it makes you buy the Connect, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and, and, you know, this is the you're going to have options. You're going to have different size versions, especially in the PC world. You're going to have uh, several makers. You end up with an Asus instead of a, a Oculus version or HTC mm -hmm. or or whatever the case may be. So which which helps make it it gets in everybody's hands. It gives them options. Right. Yep. So good to see. Good to see. I mean, one of the, that's one of the nice things about the PC, PC ecosystem is. Is the way that drives that down. Well, thank you, Kraus, uh, Crazy Kraus on the Twitter with the K's, uh, for joining us on the show and uh, um, yeah, help us with Microsoftness before uh, he took off. Uh, we got, like I said, we had a ton of stories in here, but unfortunately, not not as much time to get through well, a lot the, of them. The one thing that I did want to touch upon, mm -hmm. and this this again goes back to our fans are are integrated into the show a lot through the the chat room and through interactions throughout the week. Chilla, last week you shared your your awesome bag of holding over there. Your your uh, the, the Decepticon your Decepticon bag. bag. Yes. So our Patreon Matt Weller actually shared over into the group this week the Nomadic travel bag, which he was putting in there and he was checking out because of your conversation. He he made it a point to to toss it in there. I have to go check that out. Yes, the the link is in the show notes and it'll be in the show notes for the website as well. And it's the most functional travel bag ever. And it's a current Kickstarter. So you know how much we love the Kickstarter projects. And it has a vacuum bag, carry-on size, uh, backpack and duffel modes. So similar to yours. Uh, it has a book pocket, laptop and tablet pockets, durable material, easy access pocket, shoe compartment. So it has a completely separate shoe compartment. Um, water bottle pocket, valuables pocket, underwear compartment. That, that's kind of handy, I guess. Uh, cord management sternum strap, RFID and security pocket, uh, roller bag sleeve, and a laundry bag. So pretty much you could use this bag for anything with regard to traveling. And like I said, I thought it was kind of interesting that he was he was talking about that specifically with regard to... Oh, it's pricey. It is. But did you see all the stuff that it has mm -hmm. functionality for? And it's a bag. So, I mean, it's it's travelable. I wish that, and I'm scrolling down as fast as I can to get to look up. I'm interested to see, do they have it where they have stuff like everything that would fit in it? Do they have it where it shows it with all that stuff in it? See, I feel like this is, this is nice. I actually like this for travel travel. Not to and from work, but you can fit two button-up shirts, a down jacket, two pairs of pants, two pairs of shorts, a swimsuit, four t-shirts, a pair of shoes, earbuds, necktie, five pairs of socks, five box boxer briefs, 
Water bottle, notebook, watch, passport, mm-hmm. power bank, tablet, laptop, laptop charger, toiletries, cash, thumb drive, boarding pass, and phone charger. Sounds like everything I need for my trips. No, it, it is. It's it's completely like these these guys must do a lot of traveling because that's the perfect like nomadic project. Um, yeah, and like there's there's the one picture that it has everything laid out across the bed, which kind of reminds me of the image you did with all the tech you carry in your bag, mm-hmm. except like traveling. There's clothes and yeah. computer stuff mm-hmm. in there. Um, so yeah, I, it's just kind of an interesting thing that people are paying attention to how people carry things and how to make it best to carry more things that you need in less space. It has like a vacuum bag. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's yeah. amazing for clothes. Well, while we're looking at baggy stuff, um, <laughs> Missy, any big uh, events coming up we should be aware of? There, there are a few events coming up. Uh, I didn't refresh my my list of things, but I do have a few so, to list in here. Um, of importance, Thursday night, we're going to be doing our, our awesome cast spinoff where we talk video games with some video game guys. Uh, up until then, we've also got the Working Together is Working Better co-creation and innovation. That is actually coming up tomorrow uh, with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. Co-creating in Pittsburgh, uh, Creative Clash at Alpha Lab Gear on the 4th. So that's on Thursday. Um, the Millville Music Festival is coming up. Uh, that's next week on the 13th. Again, we had the guys on to talk about a little bit behind uh, that show. Uh, that's coming up. It's, it's coming together really well. Um, shout out to anybody who's going to be in the Millville area. We're still looking for volunteers to help out with some various spots and and work. So if you're going to be around, if you're going to be available, uh, head over to the Millville Music Festival. Probably go through the Facebook. It'll mm-hmm. link to the website. And Mill, uh, MillvilleMusicFestival.org dot org. Yes, what we is, were talking is, about. Yeah, and you can sign up to be a volunteer through there. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be working with the volunteers. So if uh, you want a chance to come talk to me for a little bit, uh, yeah, make it make it a point to sign up there. There you go. Uh, the Alternative Digital Marketing, Make Google Work for You, is coming up on the 17th. That's with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. And then we're getting into June. I can't believe it's June already. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Create Festival kicks off June 1st. And that's with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. It's going to be hosted at the August Wilson Center. Uh, we've also got our PodCamp Pittsburgh mini events coming up. Um don't have those dates in front of my face at the moment, but I know we've got another event coming up at the uh, library where we're doing our intro session type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we'll, they'll have information on that up on the site here shortly for, for the PodCamp Pittsburgh stuff. Yep. And we had a really great discussion this past week about politics and social media. Yep. And that is uh, the actually just today I got the video, the finalized video up, or at least it's on its way. It might be uploading right now, actually. Oh, <laughs> so, so that's what's taking our bandwidth. That might be what's taking our bandwidth up. Uh, so look for that on the uh, podcampitsburg.com as well as on the YouTube and the Facebook page. Uh, and also on the Circuitron Media Master Feed. If you don't subscribe to that, if you want every one of the episodes that we do of all the shows in our entire network, including our friends at Scarehouse, uh, Bold Pittsburgh, and and other places, um, look for that on wherever you get your fine podcasts. So, all right, Missy, she's that rebellious flaw on the Twitter. You want to hit her up? Uh, Crazy Krause, not here. That's a picture of me on the Google Hangout. That's very Batman-esque. Check him out, Crazy Kraus, on the Twitters. At Chilla on the Twitters, ChillaTech.net. That's where you can find me, and now you might be finding me carrying a nomadic bag. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 left, they left Kickstarter there for sale and shipping now. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you can actually get your hands on it. Thank you so much, Matt, for, uh, for hooking us up with that. Check out at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com for everything. Uh, Sorgatron Media Podcasty, including all of our great friends. Hey, uh, Ron on the Run, Ron Johnston, that we talked to uh about a year or two ago about vine r.i.p vine uh but uh they talked about like uh a lot of his kind of uh arise on there and everything as well on this past week's uh scarehouse podcast and about really content creation in in different aspects of social media and everything so check it out the scarehouse podcast um on I, wherever you get your podcast and on the sorgatron media master feed links over at sorgatronmedia.com or scarehousepodcast.com actually and of course our good friend, uh, co-host on the show, Katie Dudas, 
Katie Dutters a part of that show as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us uh, in the chat room and such. Um, live dot rest or uh, live dot awesome dot net joins us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, except for next week, where we'll be picking a different time to do that. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.